after decades of using semi-automatic sniper rifles, the US Army comes back full circle to the bold action. In 1988, M24, a sniper weapon system, was born. Let's go to the shooting platform and see what this rifle truly can do. And we will have a special guest, Veronica is back later on as well. Let's go! We are starting with the El Presidente drill, but there is a little twist right now. The El Presidente is just that little tiny flipper hiding behind the main bodyguard at uh, 300 uh, yards. So we'll start with uh, uh, trying to eliminate the El Presidente and uh, then the whole, of course, bodyguards and the El Nino, which is a successor to the El Presidente. All right, I got a dope uh, set on the scope for the 300 yards. Ola, are we ready? Yes, we are. All right, let's see what we can do. Boom! El Presidente is eliminated! Bodyguard time now. Headshot! He is a goner! Bodyguard number two. Bodyguard number three. And El Niño, he tries to run. And there's no escape. <laughs> so just like that, M24 sent out the whole El Presidente and his entourage uh, to the uh, sleeping land. That's it. <laughs> Outstanding performance at uh, 300 yards. But that's all history right now because we are advancing towards uh, 365 yards and know your limits. Ula, let me know when you will be ready. I have to update what I got on the scope. And from now on, we'll be loading one by one rounds. So as soon as you're ready, okay? I'm ready. Okay, she's ready. And let me see how much we can whack those gongs. Okay, a little bit low. I think I can do better than this. Let's see, we got uh, more gongs to practice. <laughs> of course, if I'll fail on Know Your Limit, you're losing all the points for it, right? In the competition world. That in the center, much better shot. That M3A, Italy, 1987, guys, scope is delivering so far. Now, of course, I jinxed it, right? Boom, beautiful. All right. Preserve the brass. We are reloading here, okay? But uh, as of right now, I'm running on the factory 175 grain Sierra Gold Match Federal Ammo. All right, that was a little bit low. I have to pay better attention. You better at that uh, micro, micro <laughs> ring. That is low. They are shrinking fast in size, okay? Oh, stop complaining. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, I missed. I missed. What a shame! Ah, uh, well, that's on the shooter, guys, because I know that this rifle can do it. 
So uh, I screw this, I screw the pooch on that. But you know what? Uh, there's no time to dwell. We move in Kula to three, 400, I'm sorry, 400 yards, past 400 actually. Uh, and I have to change the dope. Whoa, those coyotes? Where? Something is going on. So, yeah, I think. No, baby, that's coyotes. Coyotes? Coyotes holding only cow. <laughs> All right. Let me know when you're ready for that uh, 400 yard ula. Uh, it's ready, waiting for you. And a small target, right? Yep. Boom, and that's a dead, dead on. But there, the ula is right. There are coyotes holding. I'm telling you. Coyotes, welcome to Missouri, guys. <laughs> Beautiful hit at the 400. A little bit to the right. Uh, just slightly, because let me see. Yeah, no, that's good. Ula, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Fix it. <laughs> 450. 450. Or on the turrets, because the turret is in the metric system. And of course, we are in yards on the range. So that's roughly the distance. Man, those coyotes going nuts. I don't know if the camera is picking that noise. Uh, I, do, I think you scared them. Let's go. <laughs> you ready? Yep. Beautiful hit. Uh, that's what I would expect from the M24, guys. Nothing less. Ula, 500 yards. All right, 500 yards. That's a vintage rifles shooter's flap target with the gong in the middle. Let me check the paylocks just to confirm it. That we are still good. You should always check your paylocks, guys. Yeah, I think I'm good. Well, are you ready? Let's go. Oh! Just a little bit on the right side of the gong. I will never hit that gong, Kula. <laughs> but that's a, that's a still beautiful shot, guys. All joking aside, this is a very small target and that gong uh, cutout is uh, really tiny. So that's a, that's a good good shot. I'm not going to complain about that. Ula will go to the 550 yards, okay? Mm -hmm. And basically setting on the BDC turret is five for this, because if you will convert the 500 meters, it basically checks out to the yard as a 550 yards, or uh, just the basic conversion. So that should be uh, spot on. And as soon as Ula are ready, I'm ready, she's ready, okay. And again, we're going for a very small target. That in the center. Nothing but the sound of uh, the steel. Ula will go for a 600 yards. This is another vintage rifle shooter's club uh, target, this time without the cutout, okay? Okay. So I have to add one, one and two clicks to the elevation turret. Round goes to the chamber. I'll check quickly parallax how I'm doing on that, on that mark. Almost good. I think I will keep it. What do you say, Ula? Let's do it. Right side of the neck. Just a little bit. But that's a perfect shot. The guy is running with the blood squirts coming out out of the arteries. 
<laughs> he he is done, Ula. He is done. Trust no, me. No, he's still okay. <laughs> Let's go to the 650. This is like if I will look at that. If I will look at that. Yeah, that's the right side of the neck. He's done. He's a goner. <laughs> 650, 650, and we have to go to the basically flat six on the BDC toolet. And whatever Ula will be ready. We're going again for the small target, okay? Okay, let's go. Oh, she's ready. I'm on the roll. Beautiful hit. Right, that in the center. How come this shot is better than 600? <laughs> because I made the correction. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, a, a pretty much that's it, okay? Uh, 710 yards, Ula. We'll go for the small target, okay? Okay. So that's basically 6.5 on my metric turret. And that should take me home for the 700. That's a tiny little target. Let's go. Okay. Nice shot. Boom. There you go. Guys, M24. An absolutely hammer. You, we walked through that field with no sweat. I don't know what to tell you. And uh, this is a factory ammo, 175 grain, federal, gold, metal ammo, nothing special, right there. I'm not sponsored by the federal, so uh, I wish I was, but uh, this, is, this is the ammo I used, and it works very, very well. Uh, 1987 scope and uh, the rifle is from the Army Sniper Association, so this is the original M24, guys. That's all I can say. This system absolutely rocks. Let's go to the studio and discuss the results and the history of the rifle. All right, so rifle did very, very well at the platform, but for the special job of shooting group, I hired Veronica. By the way, Veronica, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for taking your time uh, from the very busy schedule because uh, tomorrow you're going for the surgery. <laughs> so uh, happy this, birthday to me. This was like, we really had to squeeze in those shooting scenes uh, before you were get knocked out, out of action uh, for well, at least a few weeks, I would yeah. say. So Veronica will be back about uh, two, three weeks for a recovery. All right, we'll keep the fingers crossed. I promise I didn't forget about any of you guys. <laughs> but enough with the bullshit talk. Let's jump to that footage, how you were shooting a group. Let's watch it. Hi, Veronica, ready to shoot the group? Yes, I am. Right, let's see what we can do. All right, there's absolutely no wind, okay? All right. That in the center, that's a beautiful hit. Thank you. That's two shots in the same spot, Veronica. <laughs> hey, you're making me look right. Good, good. <laughs> what are you doing there? Remember, you gotta, this is the long exit. Yeah, yeah, it's all the way back. All right. Okay, push it. Just, oh, see what happened. Try it now. All right. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you didn't load the rounds correctly. I did too. I think you're just being dramatic now. Uh -oh. 
Alright, All right. Uh, can you put one more? Yes, I can. Uh, let's see. You are a little bit escaped from that group. That's good. It's still, um, this is going to be a jaw dropping group. So that's a very good shooting, but that shot, that last shot uh, dipped into went basically at four o'clock from your two, two previous shots. Yeah. So not bad shooting, okay? Thank and you. I don't know what happened with you trying to muscle out uh, that round. Someone didn't uh, load the mic correctly. Okay, I think <laughs> that you did it. It wasn't me. <laughs> it would never be me. So the group was absolutely outstanding slightly above half MOA and if you, I was worrying because you put those two first two shots at 7.10 into one place, like literally, boom, <laughs> boom. And I'm like, if she's going to shoot the third one into the same hole, that's going to create unrealistic expectations. Uh, but the shot dropped a little bit. I know, and I could have done better. I could have gotten it. I don't know how I uh, skewed it up a little bit. You skewed it up. Maybe you tilted the rifle uh, a little probably. bit. Probably. Uh, but Either way, it was an outstanding group and the ammo used, I don't know if you guys caught this when I was talking on the tape, but it was basically 175 a grain Sierra Match King from Federal Factory Ammo, Gold Medal Factory Ammo. No reloads, no nothing uh, on this. And the rifle is 7.62 by 51, chambered by 51, but we used actually a 308 ammo. And in this rifle, you can do that. But, Veronica, going back to the rifle, I want to hear your feedback, how you did with it, what you liked, what you didn't like. Okay, so like, of course, we started out in the prone position, mm -hmm. and it's like, I, I like shooting in prone. It's like one of the most simplest things to do. It's relaxing for you. It's just like a walk in the park. The it's easiest, just, it's easiest, easiest position. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, you don't feel the recoil. It's, it's just breathing. That's about mm -hmm. it. And you're completely fine. Then I went on to kneeling, and I was behind the tripod, and that one was a little bit wonky for me, seeing as I had to readjust myself differently than like how you were shooting it mm -hmm. because it would push me back harsher like not that it would hurt or anything because it really didn't but it just I'm smaller frame I'm weaker obviously than you and it just easily pushed me back um, and then behind the barricade, I don't know why, I found that easier than the tripod, <laughs> even though I did move around from two different positions, and I enjoyed it more, actually. And this is, this barricade is designed to throw you off from, from really comfort zone, because the way how the barricade is done, uh, you, you still have to like kind of lean. Yeah, but you have to like manipulate, manipulate your body to fit into the rifle. Camera may not be capturing this, but it is hard. Barricade is designed to let you shoot from very unusual position of uh, this specific barricade, yes. which you as a sniper may find yourself down the line doing it. So that's why the barricade is constructed that way. But so going back to barricade and your feedback from the barricade when you switch from the tripods from the prone to the barricade Yeah, um, I preferred the barricade compared mm -hmm. to the tripod because like I don't know it, it was fun to manipulate my body into that different position And then it just gave me a new challenge and I don't know why but like I felt like I had more of a sense of control compared to the tripod way and it was more fun in my opinion <laughs> Now, this is a perfect segue speaking about fitting yourself to the rifle about, let's talk about the history of this rifle, Veronica. So in the mid eighties, basically US Army was looking for the replacement to the M21. M21, which was the carryover from Vietnam era X M21 it become the M21 with the little bit enhancements to the Leatherwood scope uh, and Redfield Leatherwood mechanism and scope still in the wooden stock. So by the mid 80s, this system was truly aging. 
and the spare parts were absolutely hard to find. Also, the scopes were already showing off the signs of being obsolete. Fast forward to the 19, uh, I think, 86, when the decisions were started being made, and we do have the Remington 700 rifle base, which was later designated for the Army M24 with the long action uh, and why the long action was chosen from the beginning the u.s army was thinking about going with 300 winchester magnum that didn't happen in the mid 80s and actually it happened in 2010s let's say the xm 2010 which become m 2010 was based off the long action and it's a 300 winchester magnum cartridge but the U.S. Army kind of knew what they want from the beginning. I don't know was the issue with the money that they didn't chamber this rifle right away in 300 Winchester Magnum uh, and stayed with the 762 by 51 which is basically 308 with small changes. But that's what happened. That's why we got that long action. Now the stock for the stock, they went with the Macmillan and the Marines were already using the Macmillan stocks too on their, on their uh, M40A1 rifles. The only difference in this one is, of course, there is that adjustable uh, length of pull for the stock at the end and to be honest with you i really don't like that mechanism neither do i i prefer what was done on the m4da1 that longer uh, stock and then even in the later versions a3 and a5 uh, if you want to add to the length of the pull of the stock you could just use the spacers for the butt pad and that's it butt plate and that's it so i i don't understand that mechanism i think that was kind of unnecessary also because this is a long action a lot of guys were complaining they would like to have a little bit more on that comp here for their cheek to better to have that better cheek weld on the stock and of course if you will pull that long action you can clearly see that that basically eliminates a lot of space up front when that cheek riser may be needed to whatever you have just only here left you know what honestly i think they just need to grow up because if i can deal with it <laughs> you can deal with it but uh, veronica for you when you were shooting uh, that long action it gave you the trouble too a little bit yes because i do put my face quite close so i of course have to pull my face back break the position yeah exactly mm -hmm. just so also remember to cycle the bolt fully fully to the yeah. You learned that very quickly too. And that was actually a legitimate issue which was happening uh, with the people who were getting uh, behind the M24. You had to learn to pull that bolt all the way in. Otherwise, wow, you could <laughs> create the mess <laughs> very quickly. Very quickly. Uh, too. But in 1987, uh, the government uh, awarded the contract to the Remington for the M24, which ironically, or not, or probably by design, that coincided with the creation of the official U.S. Army Sniper School at Fort Benning, my, my home, <laughs> my home school. And uh, that was perfect because we pair up right now the M24, the army went full circle away from the semi-automatic to the bold action and the schoolhouse is getting the new rifles, new sniper rifles and to clarify this guys, the sniper program was with the US army before the official creation of the Fort Benning school but this was like centralized, finally TRADOC centralized institution so we put in that date in 1987 of the creation of the US army uh, sniper school but both things happen so you got the rifle you got the schoolhouse now that doesn't mean that those rifles started trickling down to the units just like that it took a time uh, and uh, it was rather you know slow process but it was happening uh, by the 90s i would say most of the sniper sections had the m 20 uh, force also because we spoke a little bit about the art 2 scope on the xm 
21 on the, I'm sorry M21 but here we do have the Ultra M3A from Leopold which later on become the Mark IV and what we got as a reticle inside the scope Mildads. Mildads. And the Mildads were known, you remember that Veronica, because you shot M4DA1. I did. So the Unertal introduced the Mildads uh, at the beginning of the 80s. So the Leopold absolutely went for it. The Mildads has, were, at that time, were becoming like a standard for the reticles, uh, for the scopes. Now, the one beef which I will always have against the Mark IV scopes i could never understand and i couldn't find who was responsible for it but i think in the procurement was specified that the reticle will be in mills but the adjustments for the elevation and the windage turrets will be in moa and that lasted veronica even on our our m110s the mark IV tmr reticle in mills and again turrets in mos and absolutely mind-blowing that changed finally i would say 2021 when the uh, nsn number was finally approved for the mark 5 and the mark 5 was coming with uh, the grid reticle and all uh, the turrets in mills as well as a replacement for the mark for skulls on m1 tens but uh, sections had to apply for it and then you know get those new scopes so that was the thing which I hated uh, about the, the old Mark IVs that still mill uh, reticle and Hemway too, that's mind-blowing. But compare, compare this to the Art II scopes and the whole leather wood system, I think the mill that's and the, the Leopold, much better scope. Much better. How was the glass quality for you? Honestly, I loved it. it. It's like perfect for me. I, I don't have to wear my contacts if I didn't mm -hmm. really want to. So it's it's sharp. It's clear. I, I like it. Having that side uh, parallax adjustment helps tremendously. Of course it does. It's uh, it's absolutely a uh, big, big help. And the Leopold, this was a good scope. Was it as good as Schmidt and Bender? No. no. No, we are not there. But was this better than the 10 power Unertal scope? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say this was it. So this is it. That's the history in the nutshell for the M24. This is, this is very early version, guys. This is the 1980s version. And as I said, scope is from 1987. So this is the M24 sniper weapon system in the basic release version. Later on, A1, A2, and I think uh, either A3, they call that A3, the changes happened, oh, more rails was being added, the barrel was threaded, so you could use the silencer or suppressor, uh, so the things were happening. But this, this rifle is from the Army Sniper Association, and this is like a basic level zero for the M20. Four. Yes. All right. That's it. Veronica, one more time. Thank you. Thank Happy you. Happy birthday. Thank Good you. Good luck. Good luck at the surgery, okay? Everyone, keep the fingers crossed. By the way, hey, guys, if you want to buy the Vintage Rifle Shooters Club uh, t-shirts, I will have them. I will have a link pinned in the comments so you can go and uh, buy those uh, t-shirts. Big thanks to all of you and the Patreons too. Bye. Bye. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye. Hey Veronica, group was beautiful at 7.10, uh, but I missed at that uh, 500 uh, yards of vintage rifle shooters club gong. Can you clear that target out? Well, do you have any doubts in me? <laughs> All right, let's roll. That's a hit. That's a hit on the gong. <laughs> Clean. <laughs> An upper portion of the gong. Beautiful shot, Veronica. Thank you. Very proud of you. Can you repeat it? <laughs> uh, you want to try again? Uh, I don't have ammo. Oh, that was a one, <laughs> one, one shot only. <laughs>